Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's question is, how can brain-based neuro rehab and neurofeedback improve ADHD? And this is really important because ADHD is one of the most prevalent disorders among children, uh, especially in the United States. And a lot of children who do not um, just kind of develop through it or lose these symptoms as they develop um, can have these symptoms persist in adulthood. And it's one of those things that if we don't fix it early, um, these children not only are developmentally delayed, but also can be behind in school. And behind in school leads to a little bit more of like behavioral disorders even, um, acting out in school, maybe acting out in high school, maybe getting into trouble um, when, when they're a teenager when otherwise would not be. And so this is, uh, in my opinion, one of the most important things we should be doing is helping our youth and our young um, overcome ADHD early on so they can have a successful childhood, successful time in school, and then be successful members of our society as they, as they become adults. And so I wanna talk about a paper um, that's a pretty long one and it's all about cognitive neuroscience. So basically um, we're looking at the actual neuroanatomy and how the brain is changing what brain circuits are the problems during neurodevelopment leading to ADHD or attention hyperactivity, sorry, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And so we want to talk about that. And then I want to get into how we can stimulate the brain, stimulate those regions um, for either brain-based rehab or neuro, uh, neurofeedback, and which we do both at our office. And so we'll kind of get into that right away here. So this paper is from some Frontiers in Human Neuroscience. It's from March 2018. So relatively new. Um, it's called Cognitive Neuroscience of Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, and its Clinical Translation. And so we'll kind of work through the abstract, and then I'll go through a few, few um, figures that they have here. Um, but basically, um, they're looking at how ADHD is based on functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI studies, that can look at different regions of the brain. Um, maybe use as diagnostic tools, and then how neuromodulation therapies can target these deficits, and how neurofeedback and also neurofeedback and brain stimulation can help. And so we know that executive functions in ADHD so that patients have cognitive domain dissociated complex multi-system impairments. A long phrase for basically they have impairments in these systems in the brain. And so the systems are mostly these brain regions here, which include like the um, motor system and cognitive system. Um, so the right and left hemispheres, both sides, dorsal and ventral, um, medial as well, and it's frontal, cingulo, striatal, thalamic, these pathways that go kind of through the brain, okay? Um, and then also dealing with cerebellar pathways and cerebellar networks as well. All of these help with cognitive control, attention, timing, and working memory which all can be deficits in kids or adults with ADHD. Um, so the abnormalities here, there's also poor deactivation of the default mode network. And so the default mode network is kind of the, the network that is activated while we're just not doing much. And so this keeps the brain attuned and attended, um, um, but just kind of at a, a low level network. When we need to focus on something, then we have to deactivate it to get our brain up and ready, uh, get the brain waves a little bit more activated to focus. And so there's a poor deactivation of this default mode network um, that's suggesting this like hypo engaged, pause task related uh, positive network or poorly switched off, hyper engaged task negative network. So basically, um, that leads to the poor attention. And then the switched off hyper engaged one will lead to the hyper uh, hyperactivity. Uh, then here, that talks about brain stimulation has been tested, uh, and there's small proof that there can be improved functional um, functional uh, improvements here in ADHD. 
So like transcranial direct current stimulation, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about neurofeedback or NF. Um, and then this is basically looking at how neurotherapeutics seem as an attractive uh, therapy for ADHD due to their safety and potential longer term outcomes than drug therapies. Drug therapies, for the most part, only work during the, uh, while taking them, but they also can have some side effects. And um, when we stop taking them, possibly if a teenager stops taking them or an adult then just stops taking them, they no longer see the benefits and because we're no longer ever fixing the true problem. Um, so let's go through just a couple of these figures here. So here are the different brain regions that are uh, either underactivated or overactivated during specific tasks in patients with ADHD. And so I just want to briefly talk about these. The red means it's underactivated, blue means overactivation. And so different parts of the brain are doing different functions in like motor response inhibition. So motor response inhibition would be like, um, we basically say, don't move your right hand to touch an object. Um, when that object moves or that light lights up, I want you to move your left hand instead. We're basically inhibiting that quick motor response. Um, then you think of things like switching, so like task switching, so basically going from one task to another and being able to understand the different rules of the task. Uh, attention-based uh, things, again, a lot of these are in the frontal lobe. So the top part of these pictures are the frontal regions up here, which are kind of most developed in humans, right? The back part is going to be more of the um, occipital, parietal lobes, things that are more for sensation, visual sensation, touch sensation. Uh, and these are slices that are sliced like this, cut down. Um, and then lastly, like timing. So we need to have appropriate timing, uh, appropriate filter mechanisms. And so these are all important in patients with ADHD. And you can see these fMRI studies show different underactivation and overactivation in each one of these brain areas. Okay. And so then if we look at the different networks, okay. So again, brain dysfunction is ADHD. And so we have these reduced uh, task positive activation. Okay, so uh, basically this article broke it up into you have these cool executive networks and then hot executive networks or emotional processing. Cool are basically things that are supposed to be used for just attention, for uh, motor response, while hot is more of like the emotional limbic part of the brain, which can lead to like, like kids with uh, ODD or operant defiant disorder, uh, conduct disorder. Um, it can lead to more of the anxiety aspect with the hot, while the cool is more of the attention task-based, uh, schoolwork-based functions. And so if we look at the top, these are all like frontal lobe structures. Um, and I can go through all the acronyms, but basically frontal lobe structures at the top have to go through lower structures in the brain, the basal ganglia, through the thalamus and then back up to the cortex the cerebellum is also involved so again these are circuits this is a cognitive motor circuit that is happening in the brain that they they work together so the motor system and the cognitive system work very tightly together then in these hot motion uh, hot executive functions emotional processing we also have the frontal lobe structures that go through more of the insula it's a little bit deeper uh, the ventral striatum is somewhat part of that basal ganglia. The amygdala is that like fear-based emotional anger response center. Um, and then back to the cortex. And so again, we have more of these loops. And so these loops, they start in the frontal lobe and they go all the way through the brain and come back out. And there has to be proper processing in each one of these to have good function. And a lot of times we have underactivation in these frontal lobe structures that lead to the problems down the road. Um, and these are somewhat mirrored, okay? And that's why they're, they're, they look like this together. So we have this reduced aspect task positive activation here that leads to the attention problems, leads to the hyperactivity, emotional problems. And then we have enhanced dorsal or default mode network activation. And so basically default mode network is too activated. This is part of the cortex. All of these regions are part of the cortex. We have too much activation in there. And therefore, we don't turn it off when we actually, or these kids need to actually 
um, hold attention or be focused on a, on, on a project. And so these are the areas that we want to fix in brain rehab and in neurofeedback. And so if we go down just a few more, we'll talk about those aspects in a sec, but I want to get to mostly, I want to just mention a couple things here. And so again, I just mentioned like the conduct and oppositional defiant disorder. This is very common. And so, um, Kind of sort of an ODD are highly prevalent um, and between 60 to 78 percent comorbidity for ODD um, and up to 50 percent for kind of disorder basically meaning that ADHD is is very common in these disorders and that shows that you have the attention problem with that network the motor cognitive with the emotional network as well um, here's another thing I want to mention so persistence of these deficits in adult ADHD so adults with ADHD, if they persist with ADHD symptoms, have similar brain activation deficits as children. So basically, again, you're not, we're not fixing the problem with most drugs, okay? If sometimes the kids develop normally, um, brain develops, and ADHD symptoms go away. However, other times, symptoms or the brain activation does not change. Therefore, symptoms still persist. And that's why we need proper brain rehab neurofeedback therapy to improve those um, in the adults. Uh, gender deficits, the big one here is that mostly males have ADHD compared to females. Um, don't need to talk too much about that one. And then so we basically just want to go down to some treatment. So brain stimulation. Basically the brain is very plastic, okay? Um, and that is what that is what brain stimulation therapy, uh, neurofeedback is going on. It is, it can develop, it can change, and especially in childhood and adolescence. Um, and so different, different studies that have been looked at for ADHD specifically are non-invasive brain stimulation therapies like repetitive transmagnetic stimulation, transcranial direct current stimulation, and um, also neurofeedback, which is later on. Okay, so to be honest, Repetitive TMS has not been that great. Uh, if you look here, a larger number of sham control studies are needed to look at if it's actually improving because there's just not many studies and they haven't been very encouraging, right? Findings hence have not been very encouraging. So we're gonna kind of skip that one. Um, what we use here in our office is some transcranial direct stimulation. Um, generally a weak, painless, persistent direct current um, to specific areas in, on the brain. Um, again, very painless. And we'll go right to the conclusion of those. Most ethical considerations have concluded that there are no ethical reasons against transcranial direct current stimulation in children and adults, medical condition, and uh, they can be acted as a cognitive enhancer in healthy children and adolescents. Um, there, are no, there are no problems with that. Um, they have potential long-term efficacy. Uh, there could be a real advantage of that transcranial direct current over stimulant medications, which do not have that. Um, and that's because there's actually brain adaptation to the drug, which is, um, which is why when we take kids off the drug or adults off the drug, they see those differences. They, they see they're not as sharp. Um, so besides these aspects, besides a current, an electrical current that we can stimulate the brain. We also do brain rehab to stimulate those brain areas that we were just talking about, um, the frontal lobe, the motor system. And so we'll do a bunch of, uh, a bunch of exercises, kind of like physical therapy exercises, um, proprioceptive exercises, neck and vestibular exercises, all to improve on uh, balance deficits, the motor system, which leads to cognitive enhancement as well. And then lastly, we have neurofeedback. Um, so this study specifically looked at uh, fMRI and NERS neurofeedback. Um, I'm just gonna talk about the neurofeedback that we do, which is based on QEEG, um, and that they have in this, this first part here. So neurofeedback is an operant conditioning procedure that basically does like a trial and error for the brain. And so kids will play games or watch TV, watch Netflix, and the screen changes or they don't do it well in the game when 
their brain is not in the proper state. And so what we do is it enhances brain self-control, um, which is a target for our neurofeedback. And so we use electrophysiological neurofeedback, or EEG, in which we take a quantified electroencephalogram, or QEG, that we're looking at these biomarkers of theta waves and beta waves, these, these different rhythms. And generally, kids with ADHD have high theta waves that cause them to be slow and attentive, and high beta waves that kind of give the more anxiety-like hyperactivity problems. And so it has been shown that neurofeedback effects seem to be stable and long-lasting up to two years with no side effects. Um, ADHD studies show that basically 30 to 40 hours worth of runs are commonly used. Um, we do probably um, about 30 half-hour sessions um, that we can generally get good improvement. And so this is just really important to, to take into account because um, it's just another way that we can activate the brain and therefore stimulate proper nerve development. So in conclusion here, we have in ADHD, we have specific brain regions, specific brain circuits that are not developing properly. Uh, this could be due to uh, poor diet, processed foods, um, not eating enough healthy fats, inflammation, um, poor gut microbiome, um, poor development just because kids don't have recess anymore, they're not getting out and playing, they're sitting too much, they're on screens too much, um, and therefore they're not actually activating the brain regions that need to be activated to enhance their motor development and their cognitive development. And so what we do is we basically activate those brain regions through brain-based rehab, um, through some electrical stimulation, and through neurofeedback, if that's necessary, based on a quantified electroencephalogram or QEG that we run on all of our patients. And so this is something that, again, um, really near and dear to my heart because there are a lot of kids um, in high school that are starting to act out even more. Is that because their brain never developed when they were younger? Um, and so it just kind of uh, kept going. And then this leads to just you know poor, poor grades in school, kids that maybe can't get into college, that want to go to college. Maybe they uh, go out into society and just do uh, have very poor behavior that you know put a lot of stress on our law enforcement so it's just it's it's a lot that can be just this downhill slope and so if we can get to kids fast and, and improve their ability to to focus and enjoy school enjoy um, kind of order that that school brings then it's it's better for us it's better for them and it's better for our society so um, I hope, I hope everyone enjoyed this one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would also love to hear them. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in and have a great day. Stay healthy.